Hey guys, my name is Nelson Everhart, and we're back with the Wizard 101 musical tour of The Spiral. What's going on? Another one so soon after the last one? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of work uh, resurrecting some of the uh, older tunes for a completely unrelated project. So this time we're looking at Dragonspire. This is the fifth and final of the initial five levels in the game. And it's one of the first levels where things kind of started turning a little bit darker. The guys at King's Isle were talking about uh, dark and epic, uh, Mordor, uh, Wagner, Flight of the Valkyries, and the Ring Cycle. So I'm looking at concept art, and uh, a lot of the NPC characters had Russian military influence. Uh, all the, the architecture was darker, more foreboding. Uh, th there were volcanoes kind of going off all over the place. It, it wasn't a lot to go on, but I just sort of made it up, made it up in my head, and, and thankfully uh, it worked out. Now, as an extra special treat, I've actually remixed this with some new instruments. I've gotten a lot of new uh, sound libraries, and it was a lot of fun to pull this older tune up and try and modernize it a little. I might have fixed some notes here and there that got missed or something, but I didn't put any new material in it, which is something I can't say about the next tune. So this is Dragonspire 1. <laughs> There is the loop. So hopefully that sounded uh, familiar to anybody who's heard this tune. Like I said, I wanted it to be consistent with the, the first final mix I did. I uh, just wanted to polish up some of the parts. So any track that you see that has, you know, new over here, then that's something that I've uh, added to it. Uh, in some cases, I've actually replaced older instruments that I, I didn't think stood up anymore, but sometimes the, the older libraries, as I said in the last video, actually hold up really well. So in certain cases, I've I've continued to use the old instrument, as the case uh, here in this oboe, J just for the mix and the consistency. I, I If I didn't think the new instrument was adding anything, I just stuck with the old one. So some listeners have been asking me to get a little bit deeper into the music theory and without getting too deep in that rabbit hole, we'll do a little bit of that here. Uh, right at the top, it starts with just this world ending epic chord. <laughs> I, I specifically remember looking at the level art for this and seeing all the volcanoes and the darker architecture and feeling like it was a James Bond villain lair, you know, carved into the side of a mountain or something like that. So I think that's what I was working with here. This is a very kind of John Barry uh, 007, you know, spy thriller uh, kind of feel. The chord itself is a minor major seven and the melody in the brass uh, kind of makes it a, a minor major nine chord. I call it the private detective chord. I, I might have talked about that before, but I think it's an A minor. And then there is a major seven, so the G sharp. 
and then the melody is going so that that's E and a B so that B is actually turning this chord the minor major 7 into a minor major 9 and so definitely wanted to start it off nice and big and epic and you know they're, they're referencing Wagner so big epic huge start here uh, and then everything kind of comes down if anybody references military as a composer your, your mind usually goes to marching right uh, it's this something setting the pace and then uh, the other part of a march is you know a lot of times the brass here we got the horns playing those figures this is really like three soloists just playing chords so this is from an older uh, library of mine and it still just sounds good it's really pretty legato violin sound with vibrato on it so i have a lot of different parts playing these chords we've got uh trumpets are playing three of them the trumpet solo is playing it as well so when you have a uh, a group uh part put a solo sound that's playing just the top part of it and especially if it's a really good solo sound it's going to make the section part sound even better so here's the trumpet section And then here's the trumpet solo on top of it. All of a sudden it just opens up that those chords and makes it sound a little more realistic. If that top note sounds really good, you kind of, your ear sort of assumes that the, the notes underneath it also sound good. So something I've got going on here, I did a lot of uh, ornamenting of these chords going on with all the woodwinds. So these are all arpeggiated versions of the chords that are going on. So this is an A minor. Now, if we look at the oboes, the oboes are going from the C to the A, and then down below to, from the C to the A. When you've got long extended sections, you should always be looking to develop something. Something always needs to be developing. The really long chords that are playing for a bar here, there's not much going on there other than the, the harmonic development of the chords so right here the woodwinds get a little bit more developed so always look to be developing something it's a really hard thing to do to kind of talk about uh why you write the stuff that you <laughs> write because it's you know it's mostly just what's in your head I am normally looking for something that's a balance of it sounds right because it's something that's a little bit familiar you would have heard it before and also surprising where it's I'm trying to do something new with it. So maybe you ex, you set up your listeners to expect a certain chord and then do something a little bit different. All right, so here's the trumpets and they're playing this and the kind of closed voicing here starts on the A minor and then it the the fifth goes up to the F so it goes to an F major which is the sixth major that's that's pretty expected it's a pretty normal uh pretty normal chord change there that you know i've probably written a million times and then so that next chord is a little bit off that's actually an a major so we start in a minor we go to the six, but then we come back to the root, but it's the major. So that's a little bit unexpected. Going from minor, you tend to, the harmony tends to stay dark, but when you put something a little major in and I find it, you know, it's, it's a nice little unexpected twist. So it goes to the A major. And then another kind of unexpected chord there. Uh, it's an E flat and E flat is actually the, the flat five of the A. It's the least used note in, in a harmony. So basically the chord on a flat five is usually pretty uh, unexpected. So I've, I've done a couple things here that, you know, I think are a little unexpected. Then the next chord kind of sits back down. It sort of relaxes down into a more expected chord. 
and relaxes it a little bit there. And again, this is a, a D major chord. So this is the four major. That's f one, four, and five are the pretty typical uh, chords in harmony. Uh, go to the F again here. Uh, and then move to the A major again before winding up another kind of unexpected chord, which which kind of transitions us to the next to the next bit. So it's all kind of a balance of what are you trying to do to the player? Are you trying to are you trying to make them feel comfortable or uncomfortable? Are you trying to inspire them or you know kind of make them feel the, the the drama of the situation more and if you're trying to make them feel uncomfortable it, it's kind of like taking a cue from horror movies it's like so you set up the audience to expect something and then you can scare them more by doing something unexpected in this case we we use expected chords to set up unexpected chords so one of the things that i that i like about a lot of classical russian uh, music is that it's unapologetically patriotic and and dramatic so this next section so all of these sections i think i think really pull at the heartstrings so here's the uh the high strings and the piccolo playing the first dramatic melody and then the the tuba answers and then joins in for the last part. Joining in. And there again, that little, I, I felt like that, the whole beginning part of that was, was pretty expected. So that last chord was, uh, chosen to be something you know unexpected so so this parts in seven four it sets up another pulse but it, it's a little busier and it's a little more rhythmically interesting so it's kind of so the low notes here aren't moving even though the implied harmony is changing so here's the trombones and they're playing the different chords So that that um, repeating rhythmic pattern is called an ostinato. This means you know this repeating motif, this repeating idea that's supporting something else uh, that's that's going through and changing. So one of my favorite parts about this is this trumpet solo. Uh, if you notice here, I act, I've actually used the old sound, the original sound, and the new sound. I like the new trumpet sound. I, I think it sounds more real than the old trumpet sound. So here's the old trumpet sound. I feel like some of those staccatos sound a little uh, it's machine gunny. It sounds like kind of the same attack too much. Here's the new trumpet. So this is from East West Quantum Leap. This is Cine Samples. And uh, there's a lot more... Uh, intelligent programming going into this newer sound in the transitions between the notes so when you hit you know a c to a, a g it plays the the kind of sound that real trumpet players make when they're uh, pressing the the valves down to go from one note to the other and, and the sound of the embouchure changing and the air pressure changing to make that interval transition but together i think they sound a lot more interesting it's almost more like a duet than a than a solo now but it's it's just got more personality Uh, one thing that I didn't do here that I that I normally am very aware of and do is there is absolutely no place in this line where the, uh, the these trumpet players would breathe. I tried putting a breath pause in there. It kind of wrecked the the feeling of the original, so I, I kept it like this just for for nostalgia purposes. But if I was going to write this again, I probably would put the put the breath in there somewhere ah uh, yes and the anvils the anvils are auxiliary percussion instrument they're not used very often but when they are it's 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 obvious it's supposed to be emulating kind of the you know a blacksmith doing important work 
forging Thor's hammer or or you know the elven swords. There's usually references in in fantasy literature about you know the the epicness of you know creating these these weapons of the gods and stuff like that. So that's- <laughs> So right there, it's going from you know one dynamic to another is something you really have to manage uh, closely. So b- I built the dynamics up through this part, and it's it's kind of at its most epic. Everything's like cranking there. The timpanis are doing a roll here. The snares are doing a roll here. The cymbals are doing a roll here. Everything's building up to this section. But then my ideas for the next little section require that we go back down again uh, dynamically, and then we start building again. <laughs> These are my uh, John Williams chords at the end of Star Wars where Luke is in the trench and he's, you know, fighting all the t- off the TIE fighters while he's trying to blow up the Death Star. There's a lot of this just sort of end of the world, you know, this is it. We got one shot or else the entire universe is destroyed. This is just a, a C major triad. Uh, but the root is an F sharps. So it just immediately takes that, you know, nice triad sound and... Just, just messes it right up. So after this this tension, we got to relax the tension a little bit. So right here. So it's not comfortable, but the tension uh, does step down a notch or two right after that. This melody that's being played in the high brass right here, the trumpets and the horns, this is uh, the melody that's kind of the main theme of the game. And what's interesting is that it's kind of just the, the motion. This is actually kind of a different version of that. And that uh, the nice wide heroic leaps in the melody are, are kind of a callback to that, you know, main main theme. And, and it's used all over the place here in Dragon Spider. This is this is using it as a as a transition element to get to the next section. So, you know, once you find something that works, it's always fun to go back and 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 use it and develop it. Well, now comes the time where I I admit that I had some ideas here that didn't really work. Maybe you know maybe they're kind of interesting as historical curiosities. There, there's no gold here, so please don't you know think that you're gonna get to hear anything magical. But maybe it's it's kind of a a window into the the composition process kind of orphaned parts here so uh, just a little connecting section i came up with that it doesn't look like uh it just didn't really lead anywhere and i probably couldn't think of where to go after that so i just axed it Clearly looking for some kind of uh, sneaking idea here. I, I seem to recall that at one point the developers also referenced like having a part of it that was a little more sneaky, and that's probably where this section came from. Uh, the trumpet melody, you can hear some of the uh, that same sort of shapes that happen, uh, how it wound up. some neat textures in there and I, I like the I like the idea of that more than the execution of that part sounds very much much like this section uh, underneath the trumpet solo here It sounds a lot like those chords. So I probably was messing around with those chords, didn't get it quite right, uh, and then f- eventually found what I was trying to say and 
these chords set over here abandoned. So there it is, the junkyard of Dragonspire 1. I hope everybody enjoyed the remix of this track. I had a lot of fun going back and trying to update the sounds and really with the, the aid of, you know, 10 years of perspective uh, to try and really get these parts sounding like what I wanted them to sound like it i don't care who you are if you're an artist you listen to something you did 10 years ago and you're always kind of cringing inside you're like oh, i could do that better now please leave a like please subscribe if you haven't already and let me know uh if you have a favorite from the the dwindling number of remaining worlds uh if you've got a favorite tune from one of those that you want me to look at thank you very much Bye bye